Good morning. Oh, what's the time? Arr. Good morning. Are we live? Are we there? Is anybody there apart from me? I can't see if it's working or not. It's always the same, isn't it? Well, I'm sure I'll see you in a minute. How are you? Yeah, there you go. I just need a little tiny flicker of life and then I know I'm not alone. <laughs> Good morning. I can't see who it is though. Midsummer something. Midsummer Butler. Hello, Midsummer Butler. <laughs> nice name. Come on in. Oh, now they've all turned up. Grab a seat round the front. Day five of the owls. Gosh, we've learnt loads this week, haven't we? Stuart, good morning. If you're in the building already, please could you just send me a text to let me know that the sound is all right? That'd be great. Because I think this blouse might be knocking the, the mic, the mic. So do come on in, grab a seat. Have you got your tea or your coffee? Let me take them off. Oh, look at the bags under my arm. Friday, TGIF. TGIF, eh? TGIF, eh? <laughs> Come on in. This time we're going to add the sky in the background, aren't we? Yes. Yeah, I was, uh, I was uh, up with the, at the Crack of Sparrows this morning because, um, I'll tell you why, because tomorrow on television, we're on at 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock. And my responsibility was the 1 o'clock show. Paul and Linda, they're in charge of the 11 o'clock and the 3 o'clock, which is the owls. Brilliant. Wait till you see them. They're uh, groovy owls. They're really cute. My job is the 1 o'clock show. And um, it's on Hochanda, home of crafts, hobbies and art. Hochanda.com, easiest way to find it. But what I have to do, because I don't go to the studio, I have to record the show and then send it up there. And the easiest time, really, and the quietest time is at five o'clock in the morning. And so that's when I do mine. So I've already done six hours today. <laughs> I'm ready to go back to bed. But it always is best in the morning. I find in the afternoon, after we've had our doodle session, I'm not... I'm not as sharp or as, as quick as I am at five in the morning. So that's why I've been up since stupid o'clock and I look like I have as well. <laughs> but the demos came out really well. Yeah, I was really pleased with them. It's trying to pack so much into a little 10 minute slot. You know, we've a bit of a luxury here in the, in the uh, Shack Shack because we've got a whole hour to do, you've got a whole week a whole week to do one postcard. What a result, eh? Chill. I love it. But it's okay. Obviously, it's a shopping channel. They, you know, it, you've got to be quick. But it's all right. Hochanda is very good like that. They really do. They do give us a lot of demo time, don't they? It's great. Check it out. Be fun. 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock. And at... Um, at one o'clock, it's the Shack Shack hour, really. That's when I showcase um, doodle stamps and doodle groovy, what we've already done together. And so tomorrow it is the Dreamcatcher, mm, New Mexico, do you remember? It's the Dreamcatcher and it's the Kite, Lake Garda. So that'll be lovely. It is lovely, really lovely. And they're very interchangeable too, which is quite nice. Yep. Sound is perfect. That's what we want to hear. And it's 10 o'clock, so come on in, grab a seat. Beautiful sunny day here in Crowborough today. Um, welcome to the Shack Shack. Safe, happy and creative. Stay home and craft. Have you got anything good lined up for the weekend? What have we got lined up? Have you got anything good lined up? If the sun's shining? I think we may have a little barbecue on Sunday. I think Mel's coming over. Our Melanie? The artist and dear darling friend. I think she's going to come over with her dogs. And then I think she and I are going to go for a long walk because Dave's not up for it really with his dodgy ankle. 
So Mel and I will go for a nice walk and then we'll hang out in the garden together. That's something to look forward to. Tomorrow's telly, so I've got to be on the Skype. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Even if I'm not there, I'm still there. Aren't we, Paul? Yeah, yeah. So, shall we get started and shall we finish our lovely owls? Are you up for it? Okay. So this is, this is where we got to. Let's have a look. I caught up with you. I could still do a little bit of titivating, but doesn't that look nice actually? It looks actually nice with a kind of white background, but mm, owls come out at night, don't they? So I was thinking about this earlier on, because I was, I don't want you to spoil your artwork. So I was, I was having a little bit of a fiddle, right? And I thought, I know what we're gonna do. I've been saying it all week. I think we play it safe, okay? We play it safe. And what I mean by that is, because we, in order to get this depth of blue, see, I thought it would look good if we do a really dark blue at the top and then we make it lighter towards the bottom. I think it's, I still think that would look good. Um, but I think what we'll do is we'll have an experiment and we'll, we'll go in layers, right? And then you can decide where you want to get off the bus because you may say, do you know what? I don't want it to be dark, dark, dark blue. Let me show you. Do you remember the very first thing that we did with the colouring postcards? We did the, um, the nut hatches, didn't we? Let's have a look at these, the nut hatches. And you see we did a night sky there, didn't we? Really midnight blue. Do you remember how we did the scar stars, the scars? Yeah, they actually are scars, aren't they? I took a, a mapping pen, didn't I? I took a, oh, I've still got them in here. I, I took a mapping pen. Or I, you could take a, a one needle tool and I scratched the stars out, didn't I? If I held it like that, you could see that I actually dug in and chipped a little bit of white out. So we've done a night sky before, so we know how it works. And we even introduced a moon into the background there, didn't we? That's pretty cool. And look how brilliant those silver birches came out. So this time, these are browner, aren't they? Same principle though. I really like the way these branches and trunks have come out, don't you? Really twisty and gnarly. And those, the, that scarring, that's from that light. Do you remember we did it yesterday where you take like, um, like an ivory and you, you put that down first and then when you go over it, see if it works, if I just add a little bit more, I don't want to spoil it, but when you go over it, it acts as a resist. See, look, see it coming out, it just blocks the colour, it's really good. So. Don't want to spoil it though, don't want to overcook it, Grey. You fiddled around in that corner for about 20 minutes, so don't go obliterating your creation now. Right, so what we're going to do, we'll hang on to this one and we'll just keep going like this to decide whether we want to go compare, right? But this is really what we want to do now, is check out the where the sky is and and pick a blue, pick a blue, any blue. So my blue of choice, I've gone with Prussian blue, but there are loads of different blues, aren't there? There are loads of different blues. And if you're using perga liners, let's have a look what we've got in the perga liner. They've got a nice blue as well. Yeah, they've got a good blue, B4, B4, which looks a bit lighter, but that's why they're called blending pencils. Just add a bit of black. Add a bit of black and then you'll get your dark colour. But I'm going to go with Prussian. Prussian. Yeah? Right, you ready to start? What's the time? Five past. And our Stuart's in the building with you today. Good morning, Stuart. And if you've got any questions at all, any questions at all, then ask Stuart. He knows. He knows about the TV shows. He knows where to find. He's going to make a note of the pencil in case you want to know. It's number 246. 2468. Who do we appreciate? You know, if you stay around here long enough. <laughs> that was a song, wasn't it? Two, four, six, eight. Isn't it something? Reminds me of the 80s, like the clash or something. Yeah. 
Okay. I'll look it up later, unless you can tell me. Oh, do you know, I put some cream on my hands. Mistake. So I thought, it looked like old elephant skin. <laughs> so I thought, oh, I'll put some cream on my arms. Of course, you have to use your hands to do that. And now they're all oily. Right, come on, let's get going. You ready? I'm going to put a bit of white paper. Yes, I am. I'm going to put a bit of white paper underneath so that I can check what I'm doing as I go. And I think we start at the top and we work our way down. You cool with that? Yes? Alrighty. So the way I think it's best to go is into the work. Oh, Dame Edna's, Dame Edna's. I need these to do this. Righty ho. So, thing is, uh, before we start, just look at what you're looking at. I think it's important, especially, I mean, if you've done the branches, then it's, a, it's, it's plain sailing, really, because all you've got to look at is what's still white, apart from the, the furrowed fields. Um, I haven't done my trees either, and I haven't done the meadows down here. But that's all right. Sky time. It's sky time. So, but if you haven't done your leaves and you haven't done the branches yet, then you just need to look at what it is you're doing. We've got this area here, this area there, around here a little bit, under there. That's it, isn't it? So, I'm going to start up here and I'm going to try not to touch my work too much because I, I've got oily hands. So what we're going to do is go really lightly. So let's make a chisel. Let's do this. Right, just do this for a minute. I know it's a waste of crayon, but there you are. Right, get a flat, see. Once you get a flat, it's so much easier. And then what we're going to do is go around here. Oh, I've got a little fly keeping me company. I know, I've been here a while. <laughs> go away. Ah, oh. um, do you know this morning we had some excitement at five o'clock because we've got a, a, a guest bedroom and the house is a bit strange the way it's constructed. It's an old house and it sit right. So circular motions like this look just circular. And what we're doing, we're just putting down a really light blue covering okay we don't want any stripes it's good practice this see yeah so it's a funny house because it's got um you kind of go around in a circle so you go in the bedroom round the back come round through the other bedroom and then you're back at the same place again it's like a square okay and so so sometimes, like say, so you come up the stairs, there's a bed, there's a door and there's a door. You go out that door, there's our bedroom like that, and there's a bedroom there. So you go through that bedroom and you can go like that. These are bathrooms and what have you there and other bedrooms. You go round like that, round like that, round like that, and you can, so you can go round like that. So often what will happen is I'll go to the bathroom and instead of going back this way to, because of Dave, um, I go round that way to go downstairs. It makes sense, doesn't it? So does Dave. So, so he, you know, if he's going to go and make a cup of tea, he goes that way and he goes around that way. So we use this bedroom as a bit of a thoroughfare. Okie dokie. So Dave's gone round to make the tea and then I followed him to look for something. Okay. As I came round, I thought, what's that noise? Right? This, is, this was our excitement this morning. I said, what's that noise? What's that noise? It was like... Vroom. I thought, hmm. So um, let me make sure I've got my chisel. And then I saw them, and there were loads of wasps, okay? Like, there was a right old wasp invasion in that bedroom. That bedroom. Not our bedroom, that one. And um, so I thought, right, okay, where have they come from? And um, so I called down to Dave. I said, you Dave, as you do, 
you better come and investigate. He said, I know, I'm already on it. He said, I've seen it too. So, <laughs> so then he came upstairs. He said, shut the doors. I said, okay. He went into farmer mode and um, got his vac. He had his vacuum cleaner. He's over. He came armed with his vacuum cleaner, and um, it was quite it was quite funny, really. So there he was in his underpants. He hadn't got dressed at this point. It was quite a, quite a sight, really, <laughs> quite a sexy sight. <laughs> Dave in his underpants with a vacuum cleaner, because he put the light on so that they'd gone towards the light. So they were all round the round the light in the middle of the room. And then he went in with his vacuum cleaner and did his suction trick in his underpants, which was comical, really. <laughs> so, yeah, a bit of excitement at five in the morning. <laughs> hmm. There's a nest outside the window and they've obviously found a little hole and in they come. It's that time of year, isn't it? So we're going to have to call in the wasp buster. Yeah. How you doing? You're getting a nice... Let's look at it from the right side. Yeah, see? That's what I'm talking about, about going easy, start lightly, gently. It's good practice, you know. If you're, if you're quite heavy-handed, this is really good practice because what we're doing is we're using one of the darkest colours in the tin, aren't we? One of the darkest colours. Black would be the only darker colour, really. And... Um, But we're just kissing the card. You're literally just kissing the, just gliding across the top, the surface. It's really good practice. And it really is best, I would suggest, to do like circular motions rather than feathery strokes. See? And you just glide around like this. In between sections, look. I use the leafy, the stalks as sections. There you go. So you're not pressing hard at all, but because it's such a dark colour, you're getting quite an impression straight away, aren't you? So then we're going to come out under here as well, aren't we? So what I need now with me little squidgy, I'm going to lean on this because I've got... Right, top tip, top tip. Don't put cream on your hands five minutes before you're going to do some colouring in. Right, so then in we go here. But what, what we wanted to try here, wasn't it, was to see if we can get a really nice blend like that. So we still want to go for that, don't we? Don't you fancy this? I mean, you may, you may look at this and go, do you know what, I've already done a night sky, I want to do something completely different. I want to do a little English landscape in the background. You could, couldn't you? You could get your doodly, doodle hat on and you could do another line there and another line and you could do, you could do a, you could do a landscape, hills. Like, seriously, it's an option. You could do a hill like there, couldn't you? And then another one. You know, like we go like that, like zigzag, like plat. And then you could stop the sky there. So you've got more hills than sky. It's an option and it, it's certainly easy. Say, what have we got here? An HB pencil. Let's just pretend. I'm not going to do it, but you could. If you don't want to do all that blue, you could come in here and you could make the, the sky. You could make a little hill there, see? And do you know what? We may do that. What do you think? No, stick to the plan, great. We're going to... But I'm just suggesting that you could if you wanted to, couldn't you? See how we feel when we get further down. <laughs> when in doubt, hang about, eh? Right, okay. So, really, really lightly, like this. Keep it really light down the bottom, because we, we just, we want to fade it out, don't we? Hmm. Yeah. It's quite a good exercise, though, in colouring, is this. 
to to just hover and kiss the card. It's quite good. Right, let's go in here. Now down here, of course, you could be a little bit darker because it's a bit shadowy, isn't it? Right. Circular motions. Let's go the other way. What have we got going on now? Right, hang on a minute. How are you doing? Are you enjoying this? I think the owls have been a resounding success, haven't they? Looking at the Clarity Worldwide pages and looking at your artwork, like, wow, brilliant. Absolutely superb. There we go. Yeah, nice. So we'll keep this open. Right, the jury's out on what we're doing here, yeah, isn't it? Choices, choices, choices. See, you can add your, your doodlers, your illustrators, you can add your own background, can't you? Your own backdrop. If you think, well, it looks a bit hairy scary to go all the way down there and then, f and then go to nothingness. So maybe I'm... Um, still thinking because we're still we're still doing the we're still developing the skill set by doing this we just might put a hill in there couldn't we I mm, don't know yeah just leave it there for the minute the blue back there. See, because these um, the leaves are lovely and sort of lemony green, they're going to really jump when you you see when you put them behind a, a darker. They do jump, don't they? They pop, as they say. See, so this area here would look really good if it's quite dark. But we can revisit that area now, can't we? We go back up there. This is the the, the trickier bit where we're, we're not quite sure what we're doing. So let's turn it round, because cause we can. Right, let's turn it round. Stretch. Oh. Wipe hands. Have a sip of tea. Oh, that's better. Don't drip tea on your masterpiece. That was what I did yesterday. I'm not alone now, am I? Cool. Can you hear the pigeons? Good. Right, and then what we'll do is we'll add another layer. We're going to work in layers. Do you remember when we did the... Um, oh, yeah. Do you remember we did the Dee's masterpiece? That was when we did the black. Yeah, we did a night sky. I never got round to it. I was too busy. But look, do you remember this one? Check it out. This was solid black, wasn't it? So that one was more... I mean, these postcards really are spectacular aren't they when you start looking at them really beautiful um so this was a little bit grittier wasn't it a little bit it got a bit more texture in the background and then by the time we got to this area here we we got the blending pens out and we really went opaque didn't we like solid black and then i was kind of i was quite enjoying the mix a little bit of gray work as well and then, um, and then, of course, I skipped on to other things, and that was the end of that. But that's the way it goes in Grey World. This is the first time, really, with the owls that I've kept up with you. <laughs> right, should we go back? What's the time? 20 past. This is easy street. Let's go back, and let's add a darker layer now. Okay. Let's go back again. Get the old flat out again. And off we go again. And when it comes, when you get close to an image, like when you get close to an owl, and just don't worry about getting in too tight at the moment. We'll go back and do, we'll get in and do the tight bit right at the end. Because what we'll do is, we've got a flat pencil, right? This is going to give us a lovely smooth layer. And you're going to get in as tight as you can, but don't worry. Don't worry if you're not right on the line, because what we'll do is 
when we've done all of this, we can sharpen the pencil or we can flick it round and then we can go in right tight, you see? But what we'll do is we'll, we'll just do the whole area first, the big area. And then we'll go back. And you'll you'll see there's a little bit of colour thing going on here because we 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 gave the the owls that down, didn't we? You know the fluffy down. Yeah. So you almost won't even get into that area. But we'll we'll sort that out. I was thinking we could actually flick into it, make it look like down. Right. So now we're going to go with another generation of blue, if you see what I mean. We'll just call in here. It's very, very therapeutic colouring, isn't it? Very relaxing. There you go. Now you can get a bit darker now. So I mean, what we're doing here is we're deciding when we want to stop. It's like a shadow bus. It's like the shading bus. And you can get off wherever you wherever you choose, wherever you whatever layer of depth. You may say three layers in. Do you know what? I don't want to go any darker than that. That'll do me. Or you may want to go really really dark at the top. There you go. But it's all about layers. And then when we've got a few layers, if you want to smooth it out, because it looks quite gritty, doesn't it? It's quite textured. But if you want to smooth it out, we know that trick, don't we? With the um, blending pens. This is ideal. And what's even idealer, more ideal, is that we can use the ends. The, the, I hope we didn't fry them away when they got all tired. Look, that end, you see? So this... When we get to it, we're not we're not ready. I haven't quite got the amount of um, layers that I need yet. But for example, if you look at this area here, let's see it with this camera. Let's see if we can see it. We haven't got the static today because there's nothing to show you really. But if we go to this camera here, see when I go in over the top, see how it smooths it out changes the texture just let's do that little area so you see it it changes the color and it changes but it doesn't mean you can't go back in over the top but you can see it at a glance just by pushing the pigment around it pushes it into all the white into the because the car's obviously got some sort of texture hasn't it so you see you can see how it's smoothed it out and if I want to stay with that area now right I can go in now I flick the pencil around so I'm using the sharper side. Right, this could be my. Here we go. See? So you can still add a layer over the top. Once you it's not burnishing per se, it's just spreading spreading the pigment around. So I would still be using to get the middle bit done. I'm just going to still use the, the end, but I've got to be, when I get to the outside, when I want to go around, I'm not there yet, but I'm going to use the nib, the proper nib, when I want to get into the actual, yeah, see I can press gently, but this one I can press as hard as I like, and you could probably trim it as well if it gets a little bit tired or sand it. But just check out the difference between that now. See, I've committed now. I'm doing it, aren't I? <laughs> I have. I have definitely decided that I'm doing it that 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 depth, if you like. And I could probably go darker. So back to the layers. Yeah, I just wanted to show you what a difference it makes when you blend it. It's crazy, isn't it? And you can add shadow as well. So let's do another layer. This is really the secret to colouring, is getting control of the pressure. Getting control of the pressure and
Yeah. And just working in layers, really. Just circular motions. Looks good. It takes a little while. I mean, I find when I'm when I'm with you working, I go more slowly. When I'm when I'm on my own, I seem to go faster. And that could have to do with the fact that I've got a thousand things to do, so I'm whistling through. But then then you drop a pot, you know. Then you get the old drop a pot syndrome. Mm -mm 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 -mm. But I. I do like this particular design. I love the owls. Don't you? Yeah. Really beautiful, Mel. Mm. See, and the darker it gets, the darker you get the top bit, the more the images, the, the leaves and the owls will start to pop out. So a bit more layer. The thing with these polychromos, I noticed that a lot of you got your pencils as well this week. I'm really relieved and I do apologise. I can only keep saying sorry. Um, but as soon as they hit the carpet at our place, we turn them around and send them straight out. Who knew that so many of you were going to want these pencils, these grey ones, eh? We certainly didn't. Hmm. We thought we bought plenty in and then boom we didn't buy enough and then we had to reorder and then that's when the rot set in <laughs> right but it's okay we're nearly there now so you could do it light there couldn't you do you see what i mean so it's not dark at the top and then coming down like that you could do it really dark in this corner and then a bit lighter over here it's whatever you want it to be you have to decide where your light source is see that might look quite nice like a bit more faded to that to that extent it's entirely up to you i'm intrigued to see i am intrigued to see what you're going to come up with later on because we're not going to finish this well, we will finish it this weekend. We have to because we're off next Monday, aren't we? We're off on a doodle trip. We're off on a doodle trip again. About time, eh? I think we've recovered from Hawaii, eh? <laughs> that was a fantastic trip. I so enjoyed it. Tomorrow, I enjoyed, uh, see this morning I was in New Mexico again. See, that's the thing with these images. They conjure up memories, you know. And so when, we, when I was preparing for the TV shows this morning, I was using the, like the mesa, the, the, the table mountain and, yeah. And then, you, and then you're transported back, aren't you? It takes you back. I think you'll like the stamps. If you enjoyed that particular doodle session. I know you may think to yourself, well, I can draw it now. Why do I need a stamp? Well, I can draw it too, but it's a lot easier if you've got a stamp. It's about replication, isn't it? If you're not going to do it every time by hand, that's where the stamp comes in because it's just bang on every time. What's the time? Half past. Are you happy? Yeah, this is going to be good. Layers on layers on layers. Okay. Therapy, eh? Oh, it does work as well. And I've got rid of my headache. Because I had a crowner. You know when you've got one of those headaches that just isn't shifting? I think it's, it is stress. I mean, why, why pretend it's anything else? It's definitely that. And, um, and it's gone now. Because I've been concentrating on the owls and the sky and you and not worrying about everything else. 
There you go. See, I'm thinking that I really like that. You know that? Don't you think that looks good? Right, I'm going. I'm going to go dark in this corner now. I'm going for it over here. Just keep adding, and like I said, don't worry about getting too close to the images, the leaves and the branches, because we can always go in later and tighten that right up and add a bit of depth. Cool, eh? So let me see. Oh, at 12 o'clock, groovy download. That's right, Stuart, isn't it? We're every Friday in the Shack Shack, we serve up a, a digital download, a really cool project for our parching friends. So... Um, at 12 o'clock, if you sign up for our newsletter, you see, we send it to you automatically. That's right, and it's Stuart. So that's not a bad idea, you know, to sign up to our newsletter. There's no, there's no catch. I mean, you should know me by now. It's just that that way we can stay in touch with you. We can send you digi downloads, or sometimes when we're doing doodles, you know, and um, like with the geishas and that, and or the kites and what have you. Oh, I'll tell you what I want to show you tomorrow on the telly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hang on a minute. I've just, because I didn't have time. I ran out of time when I was doing the prep for the telly and I thought, bummer. But I'll tell you what we've, what we did. Do you remember when we did the hot air balloons and you were, you were frustrated with the shapes? Some of you got it bang on and some of you struggled. And so what we've done is, let me just move me owls out of the way for a minute. Because a lot of you, when you want to doodle it, you said, well, it was because you asked for these. This is why we made them. But you, you said, well, give us a stencil with an outline. So what we've done is you've got stencils. You've got four different balloons, look, different sizes, right? But you've also, if you're jelly plate people, you've also got, we gave you the innie and the outie and the little baskets. Look, ah, right, Lucy did all this. So, so you've got the, the balloon, the hot air balloon. So you've got the shape, see? You just, you literally go in with your, where's that pen? Go in with a pen like that, and then you just trace it out. And once you've got the outer edge, then the inside, you do it with your pencil, don't you? In you go with your HB pencil. I, I went in straight with the pen trying to make sure it worked. Um, and then, for example, right, so this is worth showing you this. Hang on, let me put my phone out of the way. So this is pretty good. The stencil, this is a super cool stencil to show you how to do, um, remember the dream catcher? You were struggling with the shapes and we, we did it, we got there, but it was quite hard. So there's a couple of, this is really easy because all you do is you, you just use the, you just make dots here and here and here and here and here and here and you and what it does is I, I could do um I'll do a demo I'll do a step-by-step -step on my blog for this Barbara Gray blog because this looks a bit more complicated than it is but it's a really easy way again I didn't use a pencil I was just running out of time I wanted to make sure it worked um, so I know how that works then we've got the kites we've got loads in here we've got the kites ah there you go got kites Hot air balloons. Hang on a minute. We got uh, geisha. I know there's a geisha in there as well. I just saw her. Yes. Right. So there's your geisha as well. This is excellent because, again, it's the shape. Once you've got the shape, look. So they'll be on the telly tomorrow. I wasn't able to demonstrate them. I ran out of space. I ran out of time. But you see, look. So you've got the geisha. And what is really cool, gel friends. Look, you've got the in the and the outie. So there's a whole load of different shapes. You've got the hot air balloons. Yeah, I think that'd be pretty cool. Oh, I've got loads. Why have I got so many? Yes, there you are. Just wanted to explain what that's all about on the telly. And then there's also shape stencils. 
just simple shapes and that gives you the frame the outer edge you know when you just stick that down brush over the top of it and then it gives you that outline already so there you go look out for them on the telly tomorrow because they're very cool if you doodle if you're a doodle person but you want the outline there's your outline right there okay back to the owls amazing now much progress we've already done really right yeah is that cool so this depth now and then this depth in here to get in there now don't start rushing it gray and spoil it no we're not going to do that No, I've spent all week doing this. I'm not going to bodge it now. See, I've gone in over the top. Have I got my Dame Edna's on? I sure do. So I've gone in over the top. Move it out with the rubber. In fact, best trick is going to put a bit of green. There you go. Did you enjoy doing the leaves yesterday? Interesting, isn't it? That you put the shadow where you don't think you would, but it works a treat, doesn't it? Yeah, it works a treat. It's weird that you put the shadow on the, on the side. Yeah. Titivating, <laughs> that's my middle name. So, we've done that bit, we've done that bit. And now we're, we're going to get darker up there, aren't we, for sure. Agreed? Now, let's have a go at this bit here. Because we know at this bit here, up the top, all we've got to do is take our blending pen. See if it works. This is the darkest area here. Take your blending pen. And then small circular motions. I can show you, but there we are, look. Oh, yeah. What a difference it makes. Can you see this? Yeah. Yeah, see? Now it matches that one as well. So that's very cool. And then that bit there. Oh, it's a little bit lighter, isn't it? Because it's coming down a bit. So it wants to be a little bit lighter there. And you can always, where's my blue one? Where's my dobri? There it is, my blue one. So when it comes to the outside, the real just gently does it. Yeah, this is going to look so cool. So this bit here, because so you know how that works. Right. And then the only thing I because I don't want to run out of time. The only thing that I want to show you, but I don't we'll do it at the end is to get that final tight line closest to the edge. You do that right at the end, because at the moment there's still a little bit of a halo going on. But that's because I need to sharpen my pencil and then go in right at the end as dark as you like. But at the moment, I don't want to sharpen my pencil because I'm we're doing this area here. So, let me get my, I need a chisel, don't I? I need a chisel edge. So I won't waste it, I'll do it up here. I'll use, the, I'll use this area to get my chisel. That's a good idea, Gray. This will work. So I'm making a flat chisel piece. Now I've got it. Right, so we'll use our, we'll use our pigment, our expensive polychromo pigment up here and it'll get darker and darker. There you go, this is cool, very cool. Graduation, nice. Yeah, it's all right, you know. Good. Now, let's have a look at this bit here. So what we want to do now is get a little bit darker across, along here, isn't it? So we're going to go really lightly. Really lightly. 
inside. Just kiss that paper gently. Very gently. There you go. Why am I whispering? Right, very, very lightly. So we've still got a little bit of pigment there, but it's a whisper. Yeah? Because we can spread that out as well and make it really lovely and blue. You watch. Right, so now, for example, let's come on, I'm committing now. I'm doing it very, very lightly. Okay. See, I find this actually quite hard. Look, and you can see where I poured the tea. Look, <laughs> see there? That's all right, it's a shadow. That's where the tea dropped. <laughs> And it changed the paper. Look, actually, it's quite good. It looks like a shadow. See here? That's where I dropped the tea. I wonder what would happen. Now I know. Okay. So now I've got that. I want to kind of come down a little bit further for this one. I find it's easier to work away. Don't you? Work, flick away. So here we go again. what you'll find is now, probably, your owls will be almost like a resist. I'm just turning it round to get into that area. So we want a little bit of a, a connection between this really dark colour up here and this area here, don't we? Yeah. So we just go strip, just do some strokes like that. So I wonder if Dave's called the wasp busters. Mm. Cool, when we used to live at Ludwell's, which is a really old house, we used to get loads, doesn't that look nice? We used to get loads of wasps, like loads. Now I remember, and it was, a, it was an old house, it was like 1412 or something, it's like the oldest house in the region after Hever Castle. In fact, Ludwell's used to be the, the farm that supplied Leighton Manor. It stood on the grounds of Leighton Manor, and Leighton Manor was where the uh, courtiers or the, like the servants the royal servants used to go and get their training. And so, yeah, so that's a little bit of history. And so that was where I, that's where the kids were brought up. We rented it. We couldn't buy it. Christ, it was a, I think it sold for about 1.4 million um, recently. They've renovated it. I think they're not sold out of it, really. It used to be a right old ramshackle, beautiful old house. You know, it needed, a, it did need a lot of love. It did need a little bit of, TLC and we couldn't afford it so um, so we moved on but um, but that's where we lived and we used to get loads of wasps it was it was just like a the thing it's wasp season and you'd get six or seven or eight or nine or ten nests all in the different just in the house not in the house in the in the tiles and in the ceilings in the roof and that and then um, so this particular time, Mark would have been about, I don't know, he was maybe 10 or 11, that kind of age. And, uh, and his, his bedroom, their bathroom was on the top floor. That's it. That's what it was. And his bedroom was on the top floor as well. Mark's was. And so he'd gone upstairs to bed one evening and then we were downstairs on the ground floor doesn't that look nice see how we're building it gently jazz it just just, just do it gently right. and what's nice is because the hours are quite light it really makes them pop doesn't it anyway so <laughs> he'd gone up to bed and uh, and I remembered suddenly we heard this Dave and I were downstairs. 
mum, mum, mum. And, I, and I've never seen anyone run downstairs backwards so fast. And what had happened, so he said, there's, there's wasps, and, but they weren't wasps, they were hornets, they were huge. And um, we'd left the light on in the, in the hallway upstairs. So when you went up the stairs, right, up, when I go up, it was one of those stairwells where you go up to the first floor, up to the second floor. And as he came, he was about, he was quite tall for his age. And as he came up the stairs, he put his head. So the lamp was there and there was this swarm of hornets. I kid you not. Like, like this. And they'd, they'd spent the evening gathering momentum because obviously we'd had the window open. There was a window open and a light on. And Mark's, you know, lanky. He's gone up the stairs two at a time. Boom, boom. No, night, Mum. Poof, put his head straight in the hornets. Mum! Backwards. <laughs> so that's, and that was the last time I saw Dave. He wasn't in his underpants that time. Armed with the hoover. What else could you do? You know, report me. And so we we got rid of these um, hornets with the with the vacuum cleaner. And then I remember Dave put a sock on the end because you know, it was a Dyson. You could see them in the you know through the <laughs> really angry hornets. And um, that's how he knew the trick with the with the Hoover today. Ah, yes. So that was the last time um, we had a real moment of excitement was when we ah too too long right come on yeah see so then you've got to hide it stripe go over it again doesn't that look good yeah 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 i quite like the tea stain <laughs> i wouldn't recommend it but yeah has a little bit of interest doesn't it um, yeah, retreating very fast backwards, hornets, that's what I was saying the other day, memories, 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 isn't it, ha, huh. this looks really nice, but I don't want to overcook it, because in a minute, I want to go in with my, see that area there, so it's, it's, it's dark, but I've probably overcooked it a little bit. Let's see what happens if I take my, where's my blue one? Let's see. See, mine's only an experiment. Yours is the masterpiece. Right, so I want to get it going, the nib, because I want to use, not the, not the, the, the delicate end, I want to use the, because it's such a large expanse. So let me see, if I get in here now, see what happens if I... See, it does move it. Look, see how it changes the colour. Right. Yeah, it does indeed, doesn't it? So I'll get rid of some... I want to get rid of the excess. And then I'm going to come in here. OK. So let's see what happens if we blend it out. It's all right if it's got a few clouds. I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. Just want to see what happens when we blend it. And I'm pressing quite hard, you know. I'm really pressing hard now. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Eh? What a difference. Hmm. See? It's enough to make a difference, isn't it, when you burnish it a bit. I like. I like. And so you can see, so now we come down to the next layer. So underneath here, you probably want to go even lighter. So now underneath the tree, if we want to come down to this area, I would probably just add a tiny whisper, if anything. Let's see what happens. Let me, let me do it before you spoil yours. I don't mind. I can always rub it out. Right, if I do that, Right, and let's take my my blue thing again, right? Because it's got some blue on there, hasn't it? It's going to have some on there. Now let's see what happens if we if we go in there. Okay. 
So, if you put colour down, it definitely smooths it out, right? But what happens, let me pick up some blue off here, just on my blending tool. And then let me see what happens if I come in here and I just use the blending tool to add a bit. That's what I was trying to figure out. That possibly I could get a much smoother look, 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 look. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. Check out the difference. So what I'm suggesting is, right, that you pick up the, the blue here. See, it's a lot easier. Look, if you want it really, really light, really, really, like that, down here and really smooth, it's a lot easier to just use, yeah, definitely. Do you see the difference? Mm. Makes a big difference. Let's look up tight, let's look up close and see if I could show you. So, top tip, right, let's have a look. Let it just come in. Okay, now you can see it. So this is if you put the colour in and then try and blend it, you're going to need a lot of colour before there's enough pigment to move around, to swoosh around. So what I'm going to do is rub this out again and go again with this idea, which is where I took the nib and loaded the, the blending nib with a bit of the dark blue from up here and then went in just with the blending nib. And then you get a much, much, much lighter colour. Ah, now we know the rest of the story. That's better, isn't it? Eh? So that's worth knowing, and I'll correct that later. So we've done that, we've done that, we know how to blend that, we know how to do that, we know that we could blend it that way as well, so it's lighter over here as well as down there. Mm, that would be quite nice. I think I'm going to enjoy doing this this weekend. And then I just wanted to show, because I tell you what always looks amazing, I don't know if you ever, sometimes, this colour here, is dark Naples ochre, ochre. It's a dark, it's like a dirty yellow, right? And what I'm gonna do is just go to the fields, these fields, and I'm gonna flick the ochre just down the furrows like this, because it will look superb against the blue. When, when we bring the blue in here, and I'm thinking that I'll probably do that trick with the blue up there. See, but how nice is this going to look, right? So we'll do a little bit of the, the flicking down there with the ochre. Yeah, cool. I tell you what, talk about going backwards very fast. I remember the first time I went with Dave to New Mexico, to the house. And I, I was giving him a grand tour of the house. And there's a cellar, okay. And it's always locked. So I said, oh, there's a big cellar downstairs underneath the old schoolhouse. Let me show you. So, so I had my flip-flops on because it's always really warm in New Mexico. And I unlocked everything. And, um, and I went down the, the cellar stairs. It's a big old door. Quite spooky really. You could really do a great film there, do you know what I mean? It's one of those film locations. I'm still waiting for the New Mexican Film Council to approach me but they haven't figured it out yet. Um, right and I'm just going to use a little bit of grey. What have we got here? Let's use, I've got cold grey three because it's quite a, you could use cold grey three or warm grey. Should we use warm? Where's my warm grey gone? Uh, no, I've only got cold grey. Okay, that'll do. Um, yeah. And then we'll flick the other way to get the shadows in. Look. So anyway, so there we are at the top of the stairs and we go down. We, are, we go to the, the top of the stairs and there's a big padlock and a key and that. And I say, come on, I'll show you the, I'll show you the cellar. So then we go down the stairs and as we get to the bottom of the stairs, who do you think staring at us? A skunk. <gasps> a beautiful, great big skunk with the old, the tail like that. And the tail's gone up. And so that only means one thing, right? He's going to spray. And when a skunk, have you ever smelt skunk spray? Oh, you could smell it for, 
for miles. It, and I, we'd only just arrived at the house and I thought, oh no, if the skunk sprays now, we won't be able to stay at the house for a fortnight. That game is over because it really, really does hum. So I went, skunk! And then backwards, really fast with the flip flops on, right? And then I said, Dave, out, out. Da, da, da. And, then, <laughs> and then we locked the door, padlocked it. And then I waited. I just waited. I thought any minute now, the stench is going to come up through the, through the floorboards. And we just stayed there really quietly. And he didn't spray. He didn't spray. And it was like, so for a fortnight, we lived in the house with a skunk downstairs <laughs> in the cellar. <laughs> Yeah, he was there. And i tell you why I know he was there. Because, <laughs> because in the floor, on the, along the corridor, because it was an old schoolhouse, right? And in, on, along the corridor, where the radiators, they'd taken the radiator, the old radiators out, and there were holes in the ground with, well, there were holes in the ground where the radiators had gone in, right? And, and, <laughs> And you could see his little nose, like the skunk's nose, poking up through the radiator holes. And I thought, oh, dear God. So then I got a brick. I didn't smack him on the nose, but I put the brick over the hole. And then I put loads of bricks on all the radiator holes, right? Because I thought it was just a little bit disconcerting, really. So we put bricks along the corridor. It's a really great house, but it sounds a bit hokey. So we had bricks covering up the radiator holes. And then at night, you could hear the skunk and you could hear the, the bricks moving as he was trying to nudge them with his nose. Yeah, oh, there's never a dull moment there. I tell you, rattlesnakes, skunks, the works. Yeah, great, isn't it? So here we go. And this morning we had Dave in his underpants with the wasps. We've had Mark with his hornets. And then we had, and then we had our experience with the skunk. Yeah, but he didn't spray. We were so lucky. And then we got the ranger in, Ray the ranger. He came along as we were leaving. I said, we'll leave it until we go. Because otherwise, if it goes wrong, we're done. Um, so we waited until we were going before we got Ray the ranger to come in. And, um, or pest control or somebody like that. I don't think we killed him though. We didn't kill him. They just got him out of there. They shooed him out. And he didn't spray. Because I was thinking, quite it'd be a year before we come back. Doesn't that look cool like that? You see? So you just get a little bit of that lovely... Yeah, nice. Well, that, my friends, brings us to the end of the session. Are you still there or am I on my own? Is the volume still on? We've still got batteries. It's all still going well. Cool, cool, cool. I've got to go into the office now big meeting at 12 o'clock so um so i will love you and leave you i hope you have a fabulous weekend i hope you've enjoyed the hours i'm really looking forward to seeing your backgrounds see what you what you decided to do whether you followed me or whether you put hills in be interesting to see what you've done because there's so many different possibilities with these postcards you know there are so many options it's just um uh, it's just a, a framework isn't it so thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed your week. And on Monday at 10 o'clock, all you need is your pencils and a piece of paper. And we're going to go somewhere cool. I don't know if we'll go abroad. I was thinking, given all the aggro, I think we'll stay, we'll stay a bit closer to home. How do you feel about that? I've got a really good idea. I've got a really, really nice idea. I think you'll really enjoy it. You know, in our green and pleasant land, I think we could find somewhere really cool to hang out for a few days and learn a few doodle tricks and techniques and just chill together, keep each other company, okay? But anyway, listen, have a good weekend, be safe, and, and I'll see you hopefully tomorrow at 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock on Hochanda. Don't forget to sign up to the newsletter. Look out for the Digi download. Like, follow and share so other people can join us. And other than that, I shall love you and leave you. God bless. And thanks, Stuart, for all your help. Bye-bye now. <laughs>